with Pikes Peak Trades, and it's been a while, hasn't it, since I've given you guys a comprehensive stock market video update, and I think it's time, uh, after we've seen just a massive, massive bull run from October of 23, uh, when I just knew and told my private group at PPT Advantage, it's time to load the boat on some positively divergent conditions that we'll talk about. And then just what a run it's been through the end of 2023. And then at the start of 2024, uh, when top callers are out and they're saying every time we reach a new market peak, it's time to shorten what happened. Every dip just got bought. If you didn't make a lot of money from the late part of last year through the almost the end of this first quarter in 2024, uh, you've just been on the wrong side of the market. And it's time for you to think about whether that strategy and maybe the people that you've been listening to, have they been leading you in the right direction? And certainly at Advantage, we have just had an awesome set of months. And now after Friday's price action, where we had big gap ups, and then we had... Um, Morning through the day reversals really was sparked by a turnaround in, in semiconductors. You think about a name like NVIDIA, a name like SMCI, like AMD that were up huge and then had those massive intraday reversals that then spilled over with QQQ and the NASDAQ, then leading downwards and then weakness really throughout the rest of the market. Uh, it's causing us to wonder, was what we saw on Friday, was that a significant market top and certainly weekend sentiment out there from what I can judge is about three to one bearish. We saw a slight decrease um, in the greed gauge uh, as it is 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 monikered. And so I've got to be here and, and ready to give you an update. Have we seen a significant market top uh, or is this just going to be another dip yet to buy? And I'm going to clearly show through high time frames the health of this ongoing secular bull market. And then I'm going to give you just very, very clear and key levels for us to follow in futures first on Sunday and then into cash market trading going in to Monday, what we're going to be able to look at. So as I always do, I want to start us here with the high time frames, and we're taking a look at the SPX quarterly, and there is absolutely nothing at all, no reason at all for us to be thinking here that we should be expecting some type of imminent market crash. This is a very healthy secular bull, and if you've been following me for some time, I have been calling the low that we made in October. October of 2022, when I then said in December, when we were starting to look at the close of the year as a green quarterly candle, it's time for us to be aggressive buying. And that's what I did in late 2022 throughout the early part of 2023. And I had told you guys repeatedly on Twitter and also on videos early last year, if that quarterly candle at the end of March, we're talking a year ago, that close in March, that candle above this 8 EMA, I could confirm that we have a cyclical bear market bottom. That's exactly what we got. And look at what we have done since then. Now, we had a little bit of a hiccup here in the, in the third quarter, starting at the end of July through the end of October. Really, it lasted a quarter and a little bit more in there. And that again was just a buying opportunity. One of the best ones that we've seen in late October when we had a lot of positively divergent readings. And then where have we gone through here with this confirmed MACD bull cross? And I'm suggesting here, we look at that RSI. 
right about 75 and people are saying oh the market's frothy we're out we're up too far uh this is way overbought yeah maybe on a daily weekly time frame we kick it out to monthly and quarterly that's not what we're seeing we go back here into similar market positions where we've gone from oversold not oversold let's say market neutral positions up through an rsi about 70 and you're going to take it right back in here so in the first part of the year in 2016 was that a good time to be long and then you get up here that's when things get frothy on the quarterlies when you're starting to get rsi here on the quarterlies into the 80s and 90s we're not there yet let's go back into this other time period we came from market neutral here right in here how about 2013 was that a good time to be market long and to keep your bias going up and absolutely look at what happened here look at what happened here and i'm going to propose a count that could give us that so i'm going to propose a possibility that the selling that we saw that terminated here in late october of last year that could have actually been this significant wave two pullback there's a similarity that's possible that we could get a deeper pullback like what we saw coming off some some daily, weekly oversold conditions that would rhyme in the early part of 2011. It's possible. And I'm going to show you that, but I want to make sure I show you this on the quarterly because planning out here, I am bullish through the end of this decade, I have us still in a primary three of a cycle three of a super cycle five. That That is not anticipating a secular top at all. And if you've been following me, I've kept you on the right side of this market. So we're here in the quarterly. Let's go ahead and get into the weekly because on the weekly, we do have an interesting candle. That That is a weekly doji candle but what i want to point out to you is with the spx down on the week we go to the prior week right down here on the rsi and there is no weekly divergence there on that rsi contrary to what happened from june through the end of july where we did have negative divergence and i think that is going to be the weekly condition that's going to be necessary for us to actually create that significant top you're you're going to see that i do have two potential topping targets there it is possible that we have topped either from the late october low that would be the purple minor one minor two it's possible now, I'm going to give you some things for us to look at, for us to either add or take away probability to that as we go. Is it possible that we've topped all the way up from October of 2022? That is also possible. There are five non-overlapping waves up here in SPX, and it looks even better when you look at QQQ or, or the NASDAQ composite possible that we do see that pullback against the entire price advance of a first thrust but is it also possible that what we saw in october already put that two in place and then what we saw briefly to start the year a very shallow minor two and are we still enthusiastically moving up into a minor three and I've been sharing with my group and I put that onto the charts early on when we saw just a massive advance early in January this year I'm calling it super green and I want to spend some time talking about some of the implications of that so let's just stay here with the SPX and let's get over into the daily where you can see some of those details and this is really here where in actively charting that for you I can talk about how I use Elliott Wave Theory to give me an edge. So let's first assume that we have not broadly market topped. We'll begin there. That October did set a significant intermediate too low. And then what we're looking at is a progression within a potential minor three where any pullback of a smaller degree four is disallowed to trade into the price high of that wave one. And we're going to find that right here. We're going to find that price high 
at the close of trading on Monday, January 29th at 4929.31. So I can take a tool here and I can just visually mark that high going across. And that is now essentially here our bull bear line. If I get that updated so it looks nice and straight. And then I'll put that here into a white color to designate that that could be distinguishing some counts. We could pull all the way back here within this count on the S&P, and we could still be within this minor three. Now, we break that, and this super green as labeled is no longer valid. Why? Because you can't have a degree four within a larger degree three trade into the price high, the same price high of the wave one. And what I just realized here is that is cool, slightly off. It's actually that next day's trading that set that high, 49.3109. So if we see the S&P over the next couple weeks trade into 49.31, we're going to know that the super green, the immediate bullish extension count as labeled, is now invalid. Now that gives a lot of room, and that's not a great way to play a stop loss. We look at it from a probability perspective. We're really, if we lose that 0.382 fib at about 50.43, we can probably say that we need to be market cautious. And I'll show you a different way to look at that on QQQ. That does give you, I think, a much tighter stop loss for some swing positions. I'm going to do the same on IWM. Okay, so that's looking there at the S&P. I always want to give you the small time frames here. And so what I'm showing way, way down here is where that 4930 violation area is going to occur. And I, I think what we could have just seen is another viable pullback on Friday. So my thought on Friday was, is it a little too obvious that we've market topped? On a Friday, going into the weekend, when the fear and scare can just resonate for multiple hours and days with what seemed to be an a, a, a little too obvious cracking in semis, that had me a little bit skeptical. Was it just a little too obvious that we've market topped? And so my preference here, until I'm proven otherwise by the market, is that it was in fact a potentially viable dip for us to just continue. Now, if, if, if I'm wrong, what we're going to see are weekly lows first taken out. That's going to be the first step. And that's what I've got here in this blue ABC. And we do that and we're ready to start to begin to say it's possible that this isn't an ABC. Maybe it's actually a significant top and an impulse down. But remember, that target that we were looking at on the S&P is at 49.31. So we lose that. And at that point, I'm ready to say, all right, let's batten down the hatches. Let's shift some tactics and let's be market cautious. And probably for cash flow, we're going to be needing to look to actively short. Okay, so that takes you through there on the SPX. And let's make sure that we get into Q's. So we look here at the Q's and we're looking at the quarterly and, and we're seeing here on the quarterly, a confirmed MACD bull cross. Now, the RSI again, is it in the nosebleed territory? No, it's not. It is not in the nosebleed territory. It's at 74. And that again has just corresponded with some levels that have allowed for significant quarterly extension upwards. So there, there is no reason at all from the highest time frames, which is really where you should be thinking about for your longest term investing positions, your 401k, your IRAs, your kids' college savings funds, there's no reason for you to be thinking that you need to be liquidating. Not at all. We have a very, very healthy progression. Now, again, like the S&P, are, are we topping against the bear market low, that cyclical bear, it's possible that we could get that one too. We look into the weekly and things on the queues a little bit more ominous from a weekly candle. And I talked about the RSI. We do see that divergence here on the weekly queues. Now that's not too surprising because think about within the queues how badly Apple and Goog have lagged. 
with Microsoft not at all-time highs. We don't have Amazon at all-time highs. And then we've got Tesla that's really just been in a in kind of a multi-year downtrend. And we'll talk about some of those names. And so it's possible that we then see the semi part of the sector as Nvidia and as Broadcom's waiting in the queues has increased. If they really crack and pull back along with that other MAG7 leadership that fades, that's when we could get that one too. That significant intermediate into the two off that divergence. But I'm still willing to consider that super green. Did that too already happen in late October? Did it already happen that we had a minor one two and now we're looking to continue to extend upwards? That has paid so well over the last five months, I want to first give it the benefit of the doubt. And I'm going to let the market tell me when those trades stop working. When you see some failed longs, when we see pullback FIB areas fail, when we see weekly lows undercut, okay? I have never, ever been one to try to guess a top because setting new highs is how healthy pull markets advance. And that's how you make the most money. But I know what I'm looking for, for signs of danger. So with that on the weekly in mind in Qs, let's now look at the daily. So daily here first, let's get that set. And we had a pretty ominous daily candle. And and that is consistent across many names, and and many ETFs, indices, and sectors. And that does make you wonder. That that oftentimes, that daily red trigger, oftentimes does set that pullback. And so I'm mindful of that. Got some purple zones. If we correct against October, I've got that one, two in the broader scale that I showed you then on the S&PX. Okay, now, with the Qs, its internals are different. Because of the weakness in some of the key names, Apple being the main one. And I think we can really look at cues as kind of tightening here, a stop loss or an initial look at where we're at. If this green is, is correct, next week we need to see really quick and immediate extension in this three of minute three of minor three. And we get here and drill into the small time frames. And by my counting, the weekly low on cues is significant. That's really a must hold. So if if you were swinging T, TQQQ, if, if you have a large position hold in QQQ itself or in some of the names, I would set that there as a take profit stop loss area on the large position. IWM's coming up. I'm going to tell you where I would would recommend for that as well. So I'm seeing that significant pullback here as a potential off the weekly low, a micro one two. It's at the 0.618 fib. Now, uh, is this all of a two pullback in A, B, C in here, or is this an A and a B? And we and we kind of work to undercut. Friday's low down here, maybe to 437. That's definitely on the table. We want to consider that. But really for me, I'm still looking to buy a dip as long as that weekly low holds. Now, if we immediately gap down and it's a nasty, bloody Monday, and we lose that weekly low and we keep heading down, then I think that probability increases on the bear side that we're actually looking at an impulse down. And, and we'll be ready to do that. We'll be ready to tactically shift at advantage with my group if needed. Okay, let's keep marching through some things, and I want to show you IWM. Okay, so I love to trade IWM. I, 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 I say for small accounts, it's such a great instrument to trade. It has tight spreads. It counts cleanly. The premiums are cheaper. I I really think IWM and TNA for active trading, whether you're long or short, really is great. And I've got that same possibility here. So a potential one into a two pullback. We got to be mindful of that. Also, is it possible later, later? Actually, for this one, it would have been IWM bottomed, I think, differently in January here as that super green one, two. Okay, so now we get into some of the details here of IWM. 
And what I'm looking at really clearly on these internals is similar to what I explained on the Qs and SPX. We have to see immediate extension. We can't see a four into one classic EW violation. And if I dig down into the details, that occurs here at 204.77. We can't have a three turn into a four which has already happened, and then violate the one within the higher degree three. Okay, now you're also seeing on there potentially a pretty classic rising wedge that could lead to a significant pullback. And we've got to be aware. We, we're, we're never so biased in a position. We simply do what the market pays, but we're never so stubborn to say that that's going to continue forever. We'll know we lose 204.77 here on Monday and we're market cautious. And, and that against a large TNA position that I'm holding, that's still going to lock in about 22 to 23% gains off a position that was built right in this area here. And, and that still to me would be a very satisfying trade. And then at that point, what are we cautious for? We're cautious for a pullback against the October lows. Another one I want to make sure that we look at here is ARK. And we look at this and, and we see here from the bullish side of the ledger, a potential inverse head and shoulders with this neckline right here that sloped. It tried early in the year to get out and was pulled back. Was that in growth the nested one too? And is it trying again? And are we ready to see a massive launch in growth? And over time, it has paid for the majority of positions market-wide to be bullish. That is how, over time, you get paid. And so my choice as a market participant is, is to always give that side of the trade the benefit of the doubt until the market tells me otherwise. And so I will think that it's possible that we could see a really massive run-up in growth stocks. Now, some of the things from a more, more macro perspective, what do growth stocks typically need? They typically need lower interest rates because they tend to be the companies that are needing to finance debt a little more quickly. They need those rates to be lower for them to be able to cash flow uh, just on their balance sheets. And are we starting to see the signs that interest rates themselves, then making the Fed move to cut. So that is going to be something that I think is going to be key with that. Part of that would be a position that you would think that TLT, the 20-year bond ETF, is going to perform well. Uh, that you might think that the, that the U.S. dollar is going to drop off. Now, I have those charts and I share those actively with my Advantage Group. Not going to share them here. If you want those details, come join. But that's all part of kind of a macro thesis that I think could be working together here. Okay, now, if I'm wrong and we see growth names and trades continue to fail, so we see Tesla continue to tank, and we see Zoom uh, swoop down to, to new fresh bear market lows. Then we could see here a, an ABC pullback against that October low, just like what I've been showing you in the Qs and in IWM and in the S&P. And we're just going to be ready for that. So here on to the daily, you can see the potential of it. It is kind of a nasty shooting star candle. And it, it was it too obvious or will it actually follow through to the downside? I'm giving you levels and I know that we're going to be ready. Or is it just nesting for a one, two, three explosion? And I'm excited to see. I think this upcoming week is going to be awesome. I think we're going to have lots of volatility to trade. In addition to just the responses from this market wide, We've got CPI Tuesday morning, which is coming out. And then uh, eventually here towards the end of the month, we're going to have another FOMC uh, meeting and decision. And that's going to provide rocket fuel one way or the other. Okay, I also do want to talk about DIA before I just very briefly talk about some individual stocks. So 
all-time highs here on the Dow. I like following DIA because to me it's a more tradable instrument for the blue chippers. And here we have a one into a two running flat. And then where are we looking here? Is this that one-two pullback that we're going to get so far on the weekly? There's no breakdown. And that's key for me to point out across the board. There were some daily eight-day EMA losses, not any weekly. Now, the end of this coming week could tell a different story, but for right now, there's no signs of imminent breakdown yet. Or, on the DIA, are we within another version of that super green? So, willing to consider that while respecting, yes, that we do have daily negative divergence in RSI and MACD. That is absolutely out there. Not on the weekly, except for the Qs, but we just need to keep an open mind here. Possible bear flag, it absolutely is possible. But again, for my counting, it is the weekly lows that hold the key. We lose those weekly lows, and I think any potential bull nest then is drastically reduced or violated in probability, and we need to be market cautious. Okay, a couple um, individual stocks. We, we got to talk about some of the elephants in the room here. And so we talk about Tesla. And what do we observe here? Just looking at it objectively on Tesla. Well, objectively, we do observe a multi-year downtrend. That, that has been happening here. As you see price below all weekly MAs that are in a bear stack configuration. That's not a great look technically. But do we see signs of a potential bottom? I always look for weekly RSI divergence. That is one of the most powerful technical potential indicators of a bottom. Other things I look for. Do we have price hugging lower BBs? So we had an oversold BB close on the week that ended January 26th of this year. That allowed then a bounce to create the divergence, and we ticked it again at the 0.618 internal FIB. Now, is that enough in Tesla to set a significant primary degree bottom? It has to be if my RK count is correct. And if not, then what are we going to see? Well, we're, we're going to see FIB zones fail. We're going to see potential divergence fail. And then we'll likely see this one just continue to dip. And we could put in here another potential FIB target that it could go. Could it go all the way down, sub 150? It absolutely is possible if we get that, that market-wide general correction. But this is one here. Does it need a catalyst? It probably does. Is it going to need... Continued signs that interest rates are going to fall. Yes, I think so. But let's keep an open mind here to Tesla that possibly we got that sea leg done of a primary two. Okay, now we got to look at Apple. So we take a look at Apple. Something similar here. Now, do we have that lower BB pierce and close above? We did. Something similar happened in late October. Potential double bottom area here. Now, from an RSI perspective, here's where it gets a little bit interesting. You're going to notice an RSI, a weekly sold level here, that is actually lower in RSI, but with price actually having closed above that October low. And that, from a technical perspective, that is called hidden bullish divergence. Now, it's not nearly as strong of an indicator as what I showed you on the Tesla classic positive divergence, but it's just something <coughs> Excuse me to keep in mind here that if we're going to get that green count to play out across the board, Apple has to bottom and it has to turn around. So we look here on the daily, we do see the possibility that we did get that significant bottom, but we've got to be mindful of bearish impulse projections. There, right there on the daily, there's that hidden bullish divergence that we're seeing there, right there. Okay, we're, we're looking against this right here. All the way down through a lower, lower RSI, lower RSI, while price still maintains itself above that late October low. Now, it's going to be a biggie. Those two are going to be biggies to follow. We're, we're also obviously going to need to keep track of semis. 
And so I do want to show AMD. And on AMD, it's a terribly nasty daily candle. And we were in AMD calls coming into Friday morning, and we nailed some great POF profits. We didn't hit the high, but we had multi-baggers there, and we got out before the reversal. Now, we, we didn't short, so we didn't make that money both ways. But again, I'm not a top caller. I'm not a top picker. If we're going to see a big general market-wide reversal, we're going to see an impulsive down. We're going to see a bounce that you can then short against against failed MAs. I'm not worried at all about trying to catch the first few percentages down if we're going to have a big sell-off because I know the meat on the bone comes after a failed bounce. So let's not even worry about whether or not we caught puts on Friday. There were some great payouts out there. Congrats if you did. But the big payouts would continue to come later if we're still on the downside. My thought again is, was it a little too obvious? And so instead, did we just get a minor four here on both NVIDIA, on AMD? And are we looking for one more big move up. Okay, now, as part of that, more broadly, I could show you SMH. And by the way, you I, I'm not going to do it here. You can go back and look at my SMH charting on X previous videos for months back that I just nailed this golden cross move up into this zone. It happened faster than I thought. My time progression was that it would actually go into the second quarter here. But look at what it's done. It has nailed that doubling percentage that this would double from that golden cross about 14 months ago. And then have we topped? Well, it's possible because we've hit that measured move from previous golden crosses. It's possible that we're going to get a significant cycle pullback. Very possible. We can't eliminate it. But is it also possible that it was just a little too obvious? That we've got one more push up yet before we see anything significant happen? An early warning level here would be this high at minute one. That's the high on February the 23rd. You lose 213 right in there. And then you're starting to lose some of our daily EMAs. And I think we need to be certainly market cautious. If that semi-weakness then spills over market-wide, we see Q's DIA lose the weekly lows. We see IWM lose that 204.77 internal 4 into 1 violation. It gets down low enough, and we see the S&P lose 49.31. And you can see how in what I do, it's always a sequence. It's always a chain of if-then. It's based on how I work things in internally with EW, combining some of these other key technicals that I've showed. And all of that together provides clarity where you are in total control. What we do and what I do and what I teach at Advantage is all about market clarity. Using structure, using probability, and a set of other tried and true indicators on your side for me to be able to put our group in an advantage time and time over again. Okay, There's lots and lots of other things that I could show you, but that gives you just a really great idea of it. Let's just go back here, and I'll leave you kind of with an SPY weekly, so you can see those possibilities of what I'm looking at. Again, if you like SPY as opposed to SPX, you're going to see that corresponding level right here at the end of January. We lose 491.42. So we lose essentially 491, and at that point, we've got four into one violation against Super Green, and we're looking for something a little bit deeper. So that's all that I've got for you this weekend, but man, that was a lot, and man, it was some good stuff. And if you want to continue to get my intraday, minute-to-minute, hour-to-hour, day-to-day, post-market close, pre-market updates, weekly summaries using all of this information here. Come join us at Pikes Peak Trades Advantage 
I'll leave that Discord server. You can start out in the public sphere. Uh, there's not a lot that I post there, but you can get a taste for uh, what we're training when we post it um, into our profit areas and also some general comments that I'm making. But the real, real meat of what I do is within the Advantage service, and we're having such a great time. What a great time to be a market participant, and what a great time for you to take advantage of some opportunity to get some wonderful market service. So I hope you have a great weekend. I'm incredibly excited for what we're going to see here with futures on Sunday night into Monday. Expect some fireworks this week. I think it's going to be big. So this is Wes from PPT Advantage. Take care, and we'll see what this next week and the close of this first quarter of 2024 bring. See you for now.